Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus one more time. I want to thank you so very much for just stopping here for a moment. And I hope I say something within this moment that I allow you to stay. This is uh, February 19th, 2020, and I just got through observing the Las Vegas debate between the Democratic candidates for president of the United States. And as I was lying there listening, I just wanted to listen to these few. When they had a whole bunch of them, I didn't want to listen to all that crap. But the few I decided I'd just pay a little attention to and see what they're talking about. And it's amazing, usually, when you find your few, when you're winding down to the few that you're going to be dealing with. They all talk about the hard times that they came from, what they went through. Miss Warren say they almost lost their house and mother had to go through some changes because the father, I think he lost his job for a while there. Then I come around and hear Biden talk about <laughs> it. was just amazing as I listened to these guys talking about the hard times they come up through. <laughs> and as I think about my own, you know, the first time I ran for president of the United States was in uh, 88. And I'm thinking about that. And when I think about my beginnings, I don't even want to go back to my parents, what they had to go through. I came up in the cotton fields, picking cotton, chopping cotton, picking cucumbers, <laughs> digging ditches, working in the garden. That's what I came up doing. <laughs> Taking care of my great, great grandparents who had raised me from a baby. That's what I come up from. And so as I was just thinking about that, ladies and gentlemen, it really made me laugh because what they talked about they had to go through, it seemed like a dream to me. <laughs> yeah, so I thought about that, had a little laughter. So I thought I'd just come and uh, say some things to you. Now, I did run for president in 1988. I think I ran at least one time against Bill Clinton. I ran against George, w., George Bush. And I even ran against Barack Obama. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I might have even tried to enter a slot in against Donald Trump. But I don't run a campaign for presidency like others. I'm not, first of all, begging for your money. I don't want your money because money is not a part of the solution. In fact, money is half of the problem. And so I don't focus on that. And really, when I have mentioned it to you, I don't know if you really paid any attention to it, I never really had any ambition of being president of the United States. I called up, I uh, called myself going to be an entertainer. I wanted to make the world feel good by listening to me sing, even though I can't sing like a lot of guys, but I could put on a pretty good show, entertainment show. And people applaud, it makes them feel good, it makes me feel good. So that was really my ambition. And the thing that got me on this thing about being so concerned about all the people, I've always had that compassion for people, all people. But to the extent of running for office, no, that wasn't my intent. The thing that put me on that path is this, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm glad to share it with you. In fact, the truth of the matter is, if you've been listening to my videos, I've already shared it with you because I cannot deny it. And so for you here who are listening to me the very first time, I won't deny you either. The reason that I ran for president is because years and years and years ago, I did something dumb. And that dumb act was going to take my life. I was just a little boy. It's going to take my life. And something happened. A miracle occurred. Now, I'm not going to try to tell you what the miracle was because you wouldn't understand it anyway. It was a miracle to me, for me. That's all. It was to give me some evidence that I didn't have. And the purpose of that evidence, so that by me having my life continued, that I could take that evidence, which I had just found out, that is so important on how we grow up in this life, what role we play, and whether it is a successful life or not. This information is very important. And that information was, and is, there is a power that we can't see. You know, most of us who grew up in the cotton fields and picking cotton, chopping cotton and stuff like that, we might have thought that the white man was God because we sure had his religion. We might have thought that because we couldn't even look him in the face. We had to look down at the ground while we were talking to him. You look at me, say, I'm kind of old, so I went back there a long time. So it wasn't about all those kinds of things. But here was this power telling me 
that I exist, not me, Eddie Marcus, another power that was able to catch my situation right there in that moment in time when nobody on the face of the earth, from Timbuktu to Akalukasuka, I don't care where you were, you could not have done one thing for me. Not one thing. As far as I know, I don't know if there were other powers that could do something, but I do know that there were one power, and that one power did something miraculous for me. And it showed me how much love was held for me. But it wasn't just that. The message was for me to turn around with this new breath on life and to come back and tell you the people about this invisible God, this invisible God, the role that this invisible God plays in eternity and all things. And so that's what I've been doing for quite a few years. And so when I run for office, I don't ask you for money. No, I don't ask you for money. Now, let me tell you what this message was. This message wanted to let all people know that because this God exists, this individual power, I call it God, that is the reason this earth exists, by that power. And the earth is qualified to do everything that the earth needs to do in taking care of the business that that creator designed this earth to do. And you and I, made by that same creator, having some common uh, essentials that are absolutely e uh, essential and necessary for us to survive. I mean, without them, we just can't survive. And they're coming amongst us. And what is required to satisfy them is out there. And since every last one of us require that out there to come here for us, each of us, according to that power spirit, engage our hands in the process. Now, the special thing about that is, because this power unseen cares more about us, is not prejudiced, is not bigoted, not trying to hurt us, it makes sure that the gifts that we have, the way we engage ourselves in the process, brings us our greatest joy. I mean, being involved in this life gives us our greatest joy. That's what was designed from the beginning. That's what that power that you can't see wants me to tell you. All of this. All of we, in fact, if I can put it in a few words, you have a understanding about, some kind of understanding about what heaven is like. And that is what that power was talking to me to tell you about. Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. And that is how it was designed. However, my friends, you know you got a choice. To do what you want to do. And that's what we've been doing. What we want to do. And that's why the world is messed up. I mean terribly messed up. And I guess that's why it was important that God showed a miracle to me. So I can come back and try to see if I can wake you up. Now, with all of this being in God's control. And with us falling in the guidelines of what God has designed. I'm not too emphasis, I mean, too interested on talking about what my constituents say. I don't, my constituents say anything. They want this, they want that, they want that, they want that, they don't know what they want, they want more. My constituents got a whole bunch of things going on and I be looking kind of crazy trying to deal with my constituents and what they want. My concern is dealing with my constituents to the extent that they can know what they have already. All they got to do is claim it. And so when I do that, I come back and I say, well, what are those things that are so essential for your survival? First of all, you want your wants, you want your needs, and you want your desires met. No doubt about that. You want peace and prosperity and freedom. You want joy of life and you want your dreams to come true. There's no about, doubt about that. Any human being on the first face of the earth, even your haters, your races and bigots and, and, and blacks and whites and women and men and Americans and others want that. And so when I think about this message that I'm supposed to give to you, then I'm thinking about what are those things that you need here in this life that you have to struggle so hard for, especially in times current and in times past. It's about haves and have-nots. That's bottom line. Some got and some don't. What is it like you got a car and I don't? I need a ride and can't get it. You got a car. How come I don't have a car? It's all about the system. All about the system. So what I come initially to say, ladies and gentlemen, the system that we're living under is designed to do exactly what it's doing. 
And anybody who thinks they can come in in this system and do a fantastic work that's going to satisfy the people deceiving themselves is just not going to happen. And if they think they can come in and work with that, with that system even a reasonable amount, they're going to have people in Congress, Senate, the House of Representatives, or others that's going to be that constituency that doesn't want that to happen. I don't have to worry about that. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about my life, the life that God has designed for all of us, and I want to experience it, and I hope you do. So I'm here to share it with you. So what do we do? All across the board, to the, from the furthest extremes of the left to the furthest extremes of the right and everything in between. What are your inalienable rights? Food. So God wants everybody to have food on this earth. That's God's plan. You don't have to accept it. But that's the plan. And it's already been designed that you will never run out if that's, the place, if that's what you choose. Clothing. I just say clothing because... You know, we all wear clothes now, most of us sometimes. They might not be the best, but we wear clothes. And the other is shelter. When I say a shelter, I'm talking about homes, houses, apartments, tents, caves, whatever you would want. Shelter to get out of the elements. And you should have it based upon the way that God has it planned. Designed just like you want. I mean, everything in that house that you want, need or desire, not know. You remember you used to go to Country Buffet and you were surprised at it. And so you would get, you just fill up all the plates and put them on the table and you go take a few bites out of them until you learn that that food is always going to be there as long as you're there and you want some, you can go get some. So you're not going to go and try to hoard all this stuff now. So when you first come to this new system, you might think about hoarding. It won't take you long to say you got to get rid of that stuff because it becomes junk and you ain't got time for no junk. So the time is passing. So let me see if I can speed this on up a little bit. So what I'm basically saying to you now, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Food, clothing, shelter, education. Oh, education is so wonderful. Unlimited and unrestricted health care from the womb to the tomb, dental care, everything. The best of everything because we got the best workers and everybody's working. That means that some of you might work a day a week. I know you'd be mad because you do love your job. Some of you might make well, two, two, two days a week. But you don't have to do no 40 hours. And you do that. And just by doing that, ladies and gentlemen, the master, the individual, that power that you can't see, invisible God, has it set up in such a way that you can experience, actually experience, heaven on earth. And it didn't cost you a penny. But you do have carte blanche. That means you have access to any and everything that is made at the hands of of humankind if you want it desire or need it why because you have part ownership all humans got part ownership in everything and what I'm saying here about the me here the United States I'm saying about Mexico I'm saying about Canada I'm saying about Iran I'm saying about Afghanistan I'm saying about uh, uh, Ch uh, China I'm saying about North Korea I'm saying about Russia I'm saying about South America I'm saying about everybody on the face of the earth now, you, this is what God has designed for you. That you deserve. You might not get it if you turn your back on it, but you deserve that. And if you can't go for that, if you so still caught up in darkness that you can't go for that, then you don't deserve that. And you will not get that. Because in order for this to be successful, ladies and gentlemen, I've done my part so far. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to be your leader. Look, I got old. I don't even want to be no president. I mean, if I had to to help you get this thing started, I'd do it. But I want to live. I want to laugh. I want to walk. I want to play some old ball volleyball. Because <laughs> like I've been preaching long enough. So what I'm basically saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is the focus. I'm concerned about God's will. And if your will lines up with God, then right on. And if it doesn't, I'm not upset because you're going to get Trump and you're going to get something worse than Trump. But this is not punishment. This is you shall reap what you sow. This is what you call the fruit from the seed that you plant. And the reason that I'm here to say these things to you, ladies and gentlemen, because what I'm saying to you, you never heard before. What preacher told you this? Your preacher told you what the, the slave master wanted you to know. If you turn the other cheek, if you don't start no stuff, because you're going to go through some hell here. 
you might get a good blessing when you die. And you buy into that. And right now you're so frustrated you can't stand it. Hell has broken loose. People killing each other, sleeping on the street, going through all kinds of changes. And here I am saying, ladies and gentlemen, you can listen to the richest man on earth if you want him. He will still be the richest man on earth and you still going to have just that little bit you got. You might have less if you pay Trump any attention. And those other people, oh, they're just going to keep the same old routine going. If the change is going to occur, it's going to happen because you, the people, and I come to you saying I don't need no money. I'm telling you the best thing you could ever dream of as far as an experiencing in life, as far as government is concerned. Nobody can tell you anything better than this. And if you deserve this wonderful life, I don't need to ask you for a penny. If somebody finna give you a lottery ticket, they bought it, give you a lottery ticket, you're not going to throw it away. You're going to grab it if it, had, if it hadn't been played. When they go call, you want that lottery ticket. So I'm giving every last one of you Americans a lottery ticket. And this is your lottery ticket, what I've just shared with you. Now, when you go to those polls, 2020 and vote, you can vote for Trump or any of those other guys you want to. I want to tell you just what you're voting for is what you're going to get. Or you can take a chance and trust God, not me. Trust God and your faith in God determines what you're going to commit to make sure that that God that you trust get a chance to live amongst us all. And if that's real, my job is done. You don't need no money now or ever. And you'll never be missing anything because your imagination will keep on driving you and you will keep on moving up. And human ma humanity will keep on going and going and going everlasting life. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. I am a choice. And I bring this choice from God, but the decision is yours. Bye-bye.